Hey, internet friends, this is admittedly a weird update, but has a successful coup occurred in our country? Who is even running our country right now? On Sunday, President Biden dropped out of the 2024 presidential race, making his announcement with a letter posted on social media. A sketchy letter with a sketchy signature and lacking the official White House seal. Apparently, his staffers only found out an hour before the letter was posted and other staffers found out from his post on social media. By the way, who posted the letter from his account? We all know he couldn't compose a tweet even on his best day. And even stranger, Biden is missing in action with no public appearances since July 17th, when he was last seen exiting Air Force One. And thus, rumors are swirling about his declining health. So again, I ask, who is actually running the country right now? No mainstream media dares to touch the implication that if Biden isn't fit enough to run for office, is he even fit enough to finish out his term? You'll remember that last week, Biden claimed to have tested positive for COVID, even though he promoted the vaccine as a cure-all for never getting COVID, but I digress. Biden said he'd self-isolate and recover at his home in Delaware. Then came the news that Biden would consider dropping out if doctors said his health wasn't up to par for another presidential term. Now, there are a ton of rumors swirling paired with anonymous accounts that Biden is either quickly declining or has expired entirely. CBS News had a brief conversation with Frank Biden, one of President Biden's two younger brothers, and here's what he told us. He said, I'm incredibly proud of my brother. Selfishly, I will have him back to enjoy whatever time we have left. Enjoy whatever time we have left. Enjoy whatever time we have left. Over the course of the last three days, the entire Democratic Party has shifted and restructured without a word from the sitting president of the United States. Kamala has secured delegates, endorsements, and opened up the gates for floods of donations to her campaign. Last night, Biden allegedly called into Kamala's campaign event. Take a listen. What do you notice? It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the, on the call and we've been talking every day. Um, You probably, you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do, everybody here does. It's neutral. (laughs) I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. I'm watching you, kid. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. She almost says recording instead of call. And Biden is without a stutter. Reported by the New York Post today, Biden has canceled nine trips that were scheduled for the next two weeks. This news came in around the same time as a letter from Biden's doctor saying that his COVID symptoms had nearly resolved. So just so we're clear and responsible in stating the obvious here, the White House has not provided any indication that Biden's condition is more serious than reported. But they're all liars anyway, so what is that worth? As of now, the hospice and death claims remain unsubstantiated rumors without credible evidence. I personally believe this was the plan all along, to have Trump and Biden out of the race simultaneously so our reality could descend into total chaos. Also, was Biden even running the country to begin with? Obviously, the shadow government is at play during every presidency. But was Jill's hand hovering above the nuclear button this entire time? As Melissa from Truthstream Media pointed out, It's on record that President Woodrow Wilson had a stroke and his wife ran the White House while he was incapacitated, a fact that was kept secret from the American people until his death years after his term ended. In the meantime, the First Lady, in effect, took over many of the president's responsibilities, including reviewing various important matters of state. Even after the president was released from his sickbed, he still spent the remainder of the year in a wheelchair. As 1920 came about, his mental health had clearly deteriorated as his mind wandered and he exhibited a diminished memory. Thus, the First Lady continued to play a pivotal role as a sort of unofficial acting president. As the First Lady put it, she had taken on a stewardship to care for the largely incapacitated president and keep the American government running as smoothly as possible. The situation was so unique in American history and the president's condition so tragic that the extent of what the ailing president endured was kept secret from the American public until his death a couple years after his term ended. What do you think, Internet friends? Some of y'all comment that y'all don't care and politics is a circus and they're stealing your loose or whatever. 
And really, from a certain angle, I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm standing there with you, and I understand you. But these events have real-world implications. I mean, home prices have risen 54% since 2019. Groceries are higher than they've ever been. We're closer to World War III than we've ever been. And I really do worry about the future for our children. And also, there's this part of me to a certain extent, a very reasonable extent, that believes there's a worldwide awakening happening or at least more awareness, and I plan to continue to contribute to that awareness. Thank you all for watching. We certainly have some interesting times ahead of us. Please be sure to subscribe and pick up a copy of the Deep State Encyclopedia. Bye!